Today we're going to be creating a brand guideline from start to finish. Undoubtedly the most requested video in my comment section, and rightly so, there's a lack of information out there. And even though I posted a video on how to create one of these about a year ago, my processes and systems have completely changed, and this version is a lot more detailed. Now, a couple of weeks back, I created a video on how to make a brand presentation. Now, just an FYI, this is a completely different document to the brand guidelines. The brand presentation is what we present to the clients that get our design signed off, and the brand guidelines is showing the client how to use their new identity. Now, before we start, I'm gonna quickly show you my new brand guidelines template. You'll be able to find this in the link in the description, and if you can't be bothered to build one yourself, feel free to buy this with the code JACK, and that will get you 20% off your order. So as you can see, really detailed brand guidelines split it into 10 sections. We've got introduction, story, strategy, verbal identity, visual identity, the word mark and icon, color, typography, brand assets, and brand in action. Let's create one from scratch. Now we're going to select new on Adobe Illustrator. Feel free to design this in InDesign. I know I should be designing it in InDesign, but being completely honest, I've never learned it and I've always stuck to Adobe Illustrator and they look absolutely fine like this. The only problem you may have is that these file sizes might be too big and they might crash your computer if you have a poorer performing laptop. With that being said, we're gonna start by creating 54 artboards because that's how many I've decided to make in the brand guidelines. We're going to set the orientation to landscape and we're going to change the width to 1920. So if you watch my videos before, you'll know that the way that I determine my font sizes in my documents is by starting with the smallest font size and working my way up using the golden ratio. So we're gonna start here by choosing the font Poppins, which is one of my brand fonts. And I do like to start at 12 pixels and use this for the macro text elements like at the bottom where I'm showing my email and other parts. And then to determine the other sizes, we're just going to duplicate it by holding Option and Shift. And then heading over to the 12 points, we're going to multiply it by 1.618. And then we're going to repeat this process to create our other text sizes. Okay, so we've got our text sizes. I'm just gonna bring those over to the left. Now, by this point, you should have your brand elements already completed. So this is your logo, typography, brand assets. If you want to see how to create a brand identity from start to finish, I posted a video last week, so I'd recommend you watch that first, along with how to create a brand strategy and also how to create a brand presentation. And now to determine the margin, we're going to do 1920 divided by 25, which is 76.8. So now if we create a square of 76.8, and we'll just quickly put a white border on there so we can see it. And now if we put that in the top left and also the top right, and then if we draw a rectangle, this is going to be our margin. We can use this calculation throughout. So if we've got smaller elements later on, for example, this, and we need a margin for this, then we can simply measure the width which is going to be 425, and then we do 425 divided by 25, which is 17.4, and then we know the margin of this will be 17.4, so we draw a 17.4 square here, place it in the top left corner, and then we duplicate it in the top right corner, and then every time this can determine our margin, so we need to keep all of the text and all of the assets in line with this. That's just a really quick and easy way to make it look neat and have consistent spacing across all of your designs. So with that being said, let's bring in the micro text assets first using the font size 12, and we'll also change the background color to our orange. There we go, so we have our branding agency in the top left. We have our name, agency, prepared for the client and their business name, and then again, branding agency name, you can put whatever you like here. At the bottom right, I like to add a date usually. And then we'll also put our horizontal word mark at the bottom left as well. Bring in some text. Again, making sure our text is selected by one of these sizes. If it needs to be larger, then again, we'll multiply it by 1.618. And finally, we'll add a bit of a personal touch. So whatever your brand assets you might have created may be, add a little bit of personality to the cover. So I'm gonna bring an illustration here from my branding agency nonstop. And there we go, we've got our front cover. The second page, I always like to create a contents page so the reader knows exactly what's coming up and also where they need to go to if they're specifically looking for, let's say, brand assets or the typography selections. So throughout the designs, I like to copy these over by selecting them by holding shift and then copying them with control C and pasting them on the artboard with control F. Now there is a way to copy it to all of the artboards. However, it sometimes doesn't work. Now it's this command here, which is option shift command and V. So we'll try it. Option shift command and V. Oh, and it's worked. So there we go. That's an even quicker way. And as you can see, it's pasted across 
absolutely every single art board, which saves us tons of time. First, we have an introduction, just telling people what this booklet actually consists of. Our story, who we are and what we do. Our mission and vision, which is dragged from the brand strategy document, which we will have created prior to this. We brief the reader on our strategy, so our positioning in the market. Our design approach, which has led to our design choices, essentially. Our brand values. And then we have the verbal identity, which heavily leans into the brand values, where we pick three characteristics, which we use as our tone of voice. And then we like to break them down in individual pages, which show us examples in the real world and across touch points of how we should sound when somebody interacts with us for the first time. And then we start to break down the visual identity, showing a brief overview, how it all looks together. And then we start to jump into the rules with the word mark and the icon, the clear space, the co-branding, how we shouldn't use the word mark, what the word mark looks like in action, any clear space that's required, how to not use our logo, and again, showing our logo in action. After that, we break down the color palettes, what color pairings are allowed and which ones aren't, what Pantones we should use, how the color packaging looks in action, and also how the color is used across different platforms. In the eighth section, we break down typography. We talk about the primary typeface, why we chose it. We then show the correct tracking coding and leading. We repeat this for the secondary typeface and potentially a third typeface if there is one. And then I like to show how the type is used in the real world. Come to the end, we have the brand assets. So you'll see examples on this where we have the illustration library. Showcase the brand pattern, which I'd recommend you create a pattern for every brand that you make. And finally, we showcase the brand in action. So designers or external marketers can see how this is meant to look in the real world. So if we take a look at the orange highlighted headings here, we're going to create a cover page like the front one for each of the pages. So we know what number these are going to be. We're going to copy and paste these across now to the different art boards and I'll, I'll show you when we've done. There we go. That took longer than I thought. We've got all the covers in place here. As you can see, this takes a long time to create these templates. So I would advise you just buy in mine helps me out. But no, honestly, it takes so long to make these. And for the sake of 50 pounds, you're going to get your money's back in return of investment when you deliver this to your clients. Also, if you go to layers here, you will see an example one here for a real client. Look how nice that looks. Super professional, super clean. All of the spacing is beautiful. Yeah, we're going to go through it anyway. So we're going to start from left to right. Let's start with introduction. Introduction, this is the non-stop brand identity style guide. It tells you who we are, what we stand for, how we talk and how we look. An example for the non-stop agency, which is my branding agency, is since day one, non-stop has been about breaking the rules so you can make the rules. We create brands that go against the run of play because in a world full of boring identities, standing out isn't optional. Make design fun again, make it creative. There's so many rules in place now that people just feel like they can't experiment with nice designs. Anyway, enough ranting going on, let's check out the next slide. We have the mission and vision. Now I like to pull these straight from the strategy. If you've not already seen the strategy video on this page, definitely go and check that out because they go into detail. I usually create a document similar to this, 40 plus pages at the start of an identity project, really digging into who the business wants to be and how they want to be perceived. We go through everything from mission, vision, values, and this is just a bit of a summary at the end showing showing people the highlights of the brand strategy. Now, if you don't know what a mission is, it's pretty much our day-to-day -day what we do to craft bold, rule-breaking brands that tell your story and make you impossible to ignore. The reason why you don't want these to be fluffed up corporate language because when somebody reads your mission, you really want it to resonate with someone. If they said to create a brand identity that's truly rooted in your brand's essence, that means nothing to everyone. Whereas this, to craft bold, rule-breaking brands that tell your story and make you impossible to ignore, that's speaking to somebody. Somebody who's sick of these boring designs, maybe they're in a boring industry. I say boring industry, an industry of boring identities, and they want to stand out and they know the importance of design. This is going to stand out to them. And then we look at our vision, which is our broader goal. That's what we want to aim for in the long run. I always like to position this as how we want to inspire others. So the non-stop vision is to inspire a new wave of authentic creativity where businesses express themselves through fearless, rule-breaking design. Moving into the strategy, we start with the positioning. In summary, how we want to position ourselves in the market. So for non-stop, we are here for the businesses that dare to be different, the ones who refuse to blend into the seat of sameness. And then using a smaller text size down here, again, stemming from these font sizes on the left, talking about how our approach is different and also where we're based. Based in Manchester, we've got that northern grit, no nonsense attitude to everything that we do. No fluff, no gimmicks, just proper fearless branding that gets results. Design approach, this is essentially the design direction that we agreed at the start of the brand identity. And this should be showing that we have achieved what we said we were going to do. So for the non-stop identity, it's all about standing out, no messing around. We've got the bright electric orange, filled with energy, impossible to ignore. In the text further down, we talk about how we've paired this bright orange vibrant identity with these napkin style illustrations to really lean into where the best ideas start, that raw, authentic, 
scruffy sketching at the start of a project. And touching on that, we moved into our brand values, which agree with the direction of the branding, which is bold, authentic, and daring. And they tie in nicely with the verbal identity, where I like to pick a tone of voice based on these brand values. So for example, our tone of voice is direct, bold, but also approachable. And to clarify things for people who might be working on our business, let's say it's marketers or alternatively, motion graphic designers or even other designers that we hire for projects, we really need to clarify what this tone of voice truly means. And the best way to do this is by breaking it down with some examples. So starting off with direct, we believe in keeping things clear and straight to the point. We make sure that people know we can be confident, but also not arrogant. We can be bold, but not brash. We can be straightforward, but not dismissive. On the left side, we have four different examples, two right and two wrong. So examples, we build bold brands that demand attention. We sound direct and confident. Don't say our bespoke branding solutions may help differentiate your business because we sound too formal and uninspiring. And again, with another example, your brand should stop people in their tracks rather than we aim to provide high quality branding that meets clients' needs. You'll notice by now that I really like to cut through this fluffed up corporate language because I just think it means nothing. I used to work as an accountant and I used to read these emails all the time that just had too many words in and I'm reading through it looking to see what are they trying to actually tell me here and it's so hard so I'm all about being direct which is why my design agency also holds these values. We've got two more examples here which you can pause right now if you want to read the bold and you can also pause this if you'd like to read the daring one. And now we're moving into the fun part which you might all have been waiting for, the visual identity. For the rest of this template I've not shown examples for non-stop, I've made it so you can easily edit it yourself, however we will go through the open mouth examples at the end. So as you can see here we've got a visual overview, I like to put in the logo, the word mark and also the branding action in a few different images. If you were to bring in your own images, let me show you how you can do that quickly. Bring in this picture from my talk in June, we use this as an example. Now, if you want to use Clipping Mask in Illustrator, if you're not so familiar, you just need to send the photo to the back by holding Command Shift Open Bracket, hold Shift, click on the square, and click Command and Seven, and that is going to use its Clipping Mask. Now you can start to see how easy this template really is to edit. There's a few other shortcuts as well. I'll show you at the end, which make editing this a complete breeze. So once we've shown the visual overview, we move into the word mark and icon. Starting with the word mark, I like to include the variants here. So we have the horizontal and also the vertical. On the left, I like to describe why we made the word mark. This is a page that will be included in the brand presentation. So if you've already created this, you can simply copy and paste it over to the brand guidelines. A page that isn't in the brand presentation though, is clear space. Now taking a look at the clear space here, there are no set rules as to how to create clear space, but one that I really do like to use is try and use an element of the icon. You can also, and I'll show you this in the example for open mouth, split it into the width is X and the clear space should be a quarter, maybe a half of X. But I like to use an element of the word mark. So you can see we've used the N here as the width of N to create the space in. And now this means that whenever you do use this word mark, you want to try and avoid putting anything within this space to make sure that the word mark remains legible. After the clear space, we've got co-branding. So how our word mock should look when we connect them with other brands. Now you might not necessarily need this, but I like to add it because a lot of the businesses that I work with might include Stripe or for example, with my brand Framer and Adobe. And then afterwards, we also show how not to use the word mark. Let's take a look at how this might look for open mouth where we have actually done this. As you can see, we've got some examples here for the open mouth misuse of word mark. It's just informing designers what not to do with the word mark. For example, don't change the word mark composition. Maybe don't add a stroke, don't rotate it, don't use a color outside the color palette, don't add a border, don't outline the word mark, don't, don't add a drop shadow, or maybe don't use multiple colors at once. So now that the reader knows what not to do with the word mark, I let's show how the word mark looks in action, which is here where we've just got an image covering the entire page. So now we've covered everything word mark related, we need to dive into our logo. And again, this is taken from the brand presentation. It's almost a repeat of what we've just done for the word mark, but now we repeat this for the logo as well. As you can see, we're still using this element from the JW word mark here, which is used for creating a clear space. And then finally, we go into the misuse of logo. For the open mouth identity, we had don't stretch the logo, do not replace the O in the word mark with our logo, don't rotate the logo, do not color the logo in a secondary color, do not change the color of the illustrated logo, do not add a gradient to the logo, do not add a drop shadow to the logo, do not add a stroke, or do not add a 3D effect to the logo. Again, case by case basis, this changed depending on how you want your designs to be perceived by its audience. After that, again, we have an image showing the logo in action. For the open mouth one, we did this by showcasing how the logo would look on an apron. And now we can jump into the color. So I always like to start it with the page that we created in the brand presentation, which is just breaking down our color selection and also the hex codes, RGB, CMYK, and also we'll be describing why we selected this color palette in the first place. For the open mouth one, as you can see, we have our primary colors at the top, and then we also have a line of secondary colors at the bottom. After the color selections, we have the color pairings. 
This is a really quick way of showing what colors work together. And then we've got a page talking about what Pantone we should be using for our brand. If you're not familiar with Pantones, let me show you. Now, I was stupid enough to fall for the Supreme drop and get the Supreme edition for a ridiculous amount more. To be honest, I'm not sure how much more they were, but they're just really cool. And what I like to do is get the color up on my screen. For example, we've got this non-stop orange here. Pull out our Pantones, which mine have little Supreme imprints on, which look really cool and pick the color which is closest to our digital color. And once we have that, we can write this on here. Next, we show the Pantones in use with color packaging, and then I like to show three images wrapping up the color in action. So as you can see, we're starting to build that story from start to finish, guiding people through the right and wrong on how to use our brand. And we're towards the end now, we're eight out of 10 done. So we're gonna go into typography choices where we break down the primary and secondary fonts. So we've got the primary type here, which is pulled from our brand presentation. We have gone with the font Owners X Narrow. On the left, I like to describe why we've chose that font. And then the page after, I believe this to be one of the most important pages on the document, the tracking curtain and leading. Now, as you can see, just by simply looking at these three different columns, it makes such a difference how our typography is used. When it's too tight, it can look like this. And when it's too loose, it can look like the M1. So it's really important that we make very, very clear how we want our text to look. And that's why we've got examples here showing the tracking and also the leading. A rule of thumb that I commonly go for when determining the tracking and also the leading. When it's bigger titles like this, I tend to keep the leading at a one-to-one -one ratio. And when we've got smaller subheadings, I tend to multiply it by 1.2. So you see here, we have a font size of 22. That means the leading 22 times 1.2, which is 26. And then we just repeat these two slides for the secondary type. As you can see, we've got pop-ins as the secondary font. I love using pop-ins, it just looks really clean, you can't go wrong with it. And then again, we show how Poppins looks whenever we use that as a heading. And then after this, I like to show the type in use with some social media examples. I pulled this template from my digital use template, which you'll be able to find in my store as well. If you do go and check out the link in the description, we've got Ballo Grayson as our primary type. We have Poppins as the secondary type, and then showcasing the type in use. It clearly shows how we've got Poppin, all caps, 30 kerning. In this example, we've got Bello Grayson plus 10 kerning. And for our word mark, it also shows how we use Bello Grayson. So finally, before we show the brand in action, I'm gonna show you how we create an illustration library. So this is the nonstop illustration library. As you can see, I've split it into three. We've got hand illustrations, people illustrations, and other illustrations. I've actually got these the wrong way around. And then after this, I like to show the brand pattern that we've created as well, which looks like this in our case. So that is pretty much the entire brand guidelines. Afterwards, I like to show different mock-ups showcasing the end, but we'll take a quick look now at what a real life example looks like. But before we do that, we're just gonna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Framer. Undoubtedly, the best web design tool out there at the minute, requires absolutely no code, similar interface to Figma, and I will be recreating this brand guidelines on Framer. I create all of my client websites on here and also all of my own websites. If we take a quick look at the non-stop branding agency website, this was created in Framer. You see these flawless animations, not one piece of code used at all. And I'm really excited to actually create these brand guidelines on here. The benefit of me redesigning these brand guidelines templates on Framer is that when we create websites for clients in the future, we'll be able to drag and drop their own brand guidelines onto the websites. This means that people will be able to directly download fonts, assets, logos, you name it, copy and paste hex codes, all onto a website, which is gonna make it so much more interactive. And I'll be sure once I've completed it to make a video breaking down exactly how you can edit it as well. But for now, if you'd like to create your own website using Framer, make sure to use the code Jack and that's going to get you 25% off your first three months. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so before we look at the open mouth guidelines, I'm gonna show you really quickly some shortcuts how you can edit this template with speed. And the first one is that you might be thinking it's gonna be a complete nightmare if you've got a different color palette and a different selection of fonts to go through and one by one change these. But if you go to type, find and replace font, Font. click on the font you want to replace and then head to replace font with system you can simply go down select the font that you'd like to replace it with click change all and as you can see this changes all of the fonts at once next if you want to edit the color palette with speed all you need to do is select your artboard go to edit edit colors recolor artwork and this is going to bring up every color in the document which you can just change the values to exact and presumably you'll have your hex codes to hand which you can just type in in the bottom right here change your colors and that's gonna change it across the entire guidelines. So just before we finish, a quick look at how this might look for a real client that you're working on. Again, we've edited the story, brought in the strategy from the strategy document that we've created. We've showcased the logo, showcased the clear space. We've done the same for the word mark as well. When it comes to the color pairings, we've explained everything, showcased the typography choices, 
how they should look in action, examples of the type in use, and finally the illustration library that we've created along with this really unique brand pattern. So hopefully you found some value out of this video. I would definitely recommend if you're at the start of an identity project to first watch the brand strategy video, followed by the brand presentation video, and then also watch my building a brand identity in one day video, which is gonna take you from start to finish. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week where we'll be creating a brand identity from start to finish.